Routing in Nuendo or Cubase seems like a simple topic, but to be honest, I run into problems with it every now and then. Things just don't work the way that I imagine they should. And so I have to kind of dig through it and figure out what's going on. Now, Cubase does a great job because it's software of doing things for you automatically behind the scenes. The downside to that is you can't really see on the screen exactly what's going on. So this video is specifically about routing in relation to channel configuration, mono or stereo or so on. We're all familiar with this dialog here. This is add track. Uh, this is true for whether we're adding an audio channel or a group or whatever, but we have to choose the channel configuration. The thing is, once we add the track, we cannot change the channel configuration. They do have uh, an indicator on each channel. One circle means mono, two circles mean stereo, and for the higher channel count things, they have the name of it like 5.1. We can look at the panner and we can look at the number of meters uh, or meter strips on the level meter section. You can see on both of the mono channel and the stereo channel, there's two of these meters. So we can't judge by the panner or the number of meters on the channel what the channel configuration is. This depends on the fact that these channels are both being routed to the stereo out. Now another thing that was confusing to me was I always thought that the channel configuration would determine whether or not you were getting a mono or a stereo recording when you press record. Well, it doesn't really work that way. It's actually dependent on the input. So here I have a stereo channel. Now it's routed to uh, a mono source. So when I arm the track and hit record, you can see that even though I'm recording onto a stereo track, I'm getting a mono event and you can see there's only one bar on the level meter. So the channel configuration doesn't affect the way that the panner looks or the meters, the number of meters, and it doesn't even affect what gets recorded. So what does it even mean? Well, it seems to mean something you can't even see on the screen, and that's the way that the signals run through the channel from input to output. Has this ever happened to you? I've got a nice Don't vocal you here. Ever worry or think and it sounds good, but what I'd like to do is give it a little more energy and a little more movement. So I decide, well, hey, I'm going to throw a ping pong delay as an insert on that. Don't you ever worry. And what happens? I think you were. Well, we're not getting a stereo delay. And why is that? Because we've got a stereo delay on a mono channel. And the way Cubase works is a stereo effect on a mono channel. Only the left output of the stereo effect gets used. I understand other DAWs will change the configuration internally if you add a stereo plugin, but Cubase doesn't work that way. If it's mono, it stays mono. So in this case, probably the, the best thing to do is just create another channel, an effect channel, and just do kind of the ordinary thing. You put a stereo effect on the stereo channel. We use a send and now we send it over. Don't you ever worry. There you go. I think you were unfair. We get into a similar issue when we have a true stereo reverb. A true stereo reverb is one that not only has stereo out, but it responds differently to the left and right inputs as well. This was something from a project I was working on last Christmas. I wanted to have the sleigh bell pan from left to right uh, during the course of the last verse of the song. And I wanted it to sound like it was in the distance. So I created a reverb channel and put reverence on it with a, a good distant sound and added a send into that channel. I turn the gain down on the direct sleigh bell signal and we're hearing the, the output of the reverb. Now, when I pan it, I wanted to hear that sleigh bell in the distance panning across the image and it's not. So why is that? I do have a stereo channel now. The reverb is on a stereo channel. But the problem is that I'm using a send from a mono channel. So both the left and the right 
paths of the reverb channel are getting the same signal. This brings up a really cool feature that I didn't really know about until I did this video. If you go to the, the settings, or you go to the sends section and you click this tab at the bottom called panning. I call it that a secret because I didn't know about it. So now I can pan the send and it's subtle, but you can hear the sleigh bell sound like it's way off on one side or way on the other side, but way off in the distance. So that's a cool feature worth the price of admission, yeah? On the other hand, sometimes we have a mono channel and we want to convert it to a stereo. So I'll give you an example. We have a guitar here that was recorded in mono and we want it to sound really wide. So we're going to use the Haas effect. And to do that, obviously we need to convert it to stereo. But what we can do here is create a stereo channel. I've called it guitar wide. And on that, we've put the stereo delay and we've got a 35 millisecond delay on the right channel and no delay on the left channel. That's what creates the Haas effect. Normally with an effect, you want the dry signal and the effect. So you use a send from the dry signal to the effect. In this case, we don't want the dry signal. We just want this wide effect. So instead of using a send, we're going to go to the raw channel and change the output from the main mix to our guitar wide, which is our effect channel. So now when we play it, you can hear that Haas effect going on. We've talked about going from mono to stereo first by using a send and then by changing the output of the mono channel to the stereo channel. In both of those cases, we need to have both channels. The audio is on the mono channel and then we route it somehow to the stereo channel. But there's another way to do that and it is simply to have an audio channel that is stereo. Even though we recorded the event in mono, we can simply drag the event down to the stereo channel. Now, as long as we have the stereo delay then on that stereo channel, then we're good. So we can actually delete these other channels like so. And we still get that effect. So it's a simpler routing, but it can get a little tricky to do it that way, especially if you have to punch in later. We can also get into trouble using a mono plugin on a stereo channel. Now here's an example. I have a mono event and I'm using a mono compressor, but the problem is I'm doing it on a stereo channel. So take a listen and see what you hear. And one could tell by how he walked, he'd drunk more than his share. He stumbled around until he could no longer keep his feet. You can hear it's kind of drifting around left and right. This is because the mono plugin is inserted into the left channel while the right channel is unaffected. Now it's easy to correct. We just use the stereo version of the plugin. And this is what it's supposed to sound like. He stumbled around until he could no longer keep his feet. We've talked about going from mono to stereo. For going from stereo to mono, we have a number of different options. And we want to choose the right option depending on what effect you want to get. For example, I like to record acoustic guitar and piano with spaced pair of microphones. I just like the way the instrument wraps around the vocal. And I have a, a acoustic piano here that I recorded already in stereo with that technique. Now suppose I change my mind and because of the mix and the way it's evolving, I want that piano to be in mono. I would go to project, convert tracks, multi-channel to mono, and we're going to use selected tracks. We have the tracks selected and leave the default keep source tracks and click OK. And what happens is we get two mono tracks. Just pick one. The point is, is that I wouldn't want to fold these two, these two channels together because the microphones are a certain distance apart and you'd get phase problems that way. It would be better to just pick one. On the other hand, if I really want to fold down the left and right channels to make a single mono track, then one of the best ways to do it would be to render it in place. So I'll bring up my export audio mix down and I've already got this set up, but I want to have it set to single track and make sure I'm selecting the acoustic piano. 
I can name the new track. It's called Piano Mono, and I want to make sure I set this export as to Mono Down Mix. And I also want to make sure that this is set to create new audio track. And then when I export it, it will create a new track. It usually leaves it at the bottom. If I bring that up, then now I have a mono track that is a fold down of the left and right channels. Or we can use routing, which is the topic of this video. So here's a little test track. It's routed to the main mix, left, so you can hear it in right. stereo. This mono group is left, a mono channel, right. and we can simply left, do a send right. to left, it from that channel right. and left, disable the, right. um, left, the output. Right. Left. Right. The other way we could do it is disable the send and enable the output to mono group. It left, ends up doing the same thing. Right. And then the third way we could do it is by dragging this stereo event down to a mono audio channel. Left, right. So there you have it. I know I feel like a routing pro and I hope you do too. I plan to make another video on advanced routing for Atmos mixing. Please let me know in the comments what topics you'd like to see covered. If you want more content like this, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.